All right, there have been a couple requests for a review of the trig substitution stuff, just because uh, it's difficult material. So, to begin with, trig substitutions are useful for evaluating integrals that involve expressions of the form a squared minus x squared, where a is just usually just a number. Uh, things like this, or things like this. And trig substitutions isn't too hard conceptually. The thing you substitute here is we make x equal to a sine theta. So this is a little different from the usual substitution because what we're really substituting is, well, we're really doing something like this. We're really substituting in for theta, but it's easier to just write x equals a sine theta. And when you do this, you have to specify that what range theta is in. For the sine one, we'll always be specifying theta between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. With these types, we'll be substituting x is a secant theta, and theta will be allowed to go from 0 to pi over 2, typically. And with these types, we'll be substituting x as a tangent theta. And again, theta will have to be restricted to go from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So those are the basic ideas. So here we have a term. 4 squared minus x squared. So what we'll substitute is that x equals 4 sine theta. And usually theta goes in this range in these problems. But in fact, uh, we have to worry about our bounds here. When x is 0, uh, theta will be 0. So really, Theta goes from 0 to, let's see, when x is 2, root 3, then what is theta? Well, we get sine theta is root 3 over 2, and that happens when theta is pi over 3. So theta really goes from 0 to pi over 3. Now, proceeding with the substitution, we take the derivative of this, we get dx is 4 cosine theta d theta. Put all that information up here. We're going from 0 to pi over 3. x cubed is 4 sine theta cubed dx is 4 cosine theta d theta. In the bottom, we have square root 16 minus 16 sine squared theta. This part is really just 16 times 1 minus sine squared theta, and this is just cosine squared theta. So I'm taking the square root of 16 cosine squared. Uh, cosine is positive in this region, so I don't have to worry about absolute values. So I really just have 4 cosine theta in the bottom, and nice things happen. 
we have that. So we're really integrating 4 sine theta cubed. Let's multiply it out. 4 cubed is 64. Then I have sine cubed theta d theta. Now, if you remember from the trig integral section, we have an odd power of sine right here. And the way we deal with that is we turn it into sine squared theta times sine theta. And then we turn this into something involving just cosine. So now we'll substitute u is cosine because now the derivative of cosine or something close to it is sitting close by. So then we have du is negative sine theta d theta. And this becomes integral from, let's see, when theta is 0, u is 1. And when theta is pi over 3, u is cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. So that's 64, 1 minus u squared. And I have sine theta d theta. Which is negative du. So this is what we're integrating, and it's not hard. We have 64 times negative 1, so I'll have negative 64u, and I have 64u cubed, u squared. So I'll have u cubed over 3 as an antiderivative, and I'm going from 1 to one half. I could have switched these by putting a negative in. And then just plugging everything in. You should just get 40 over 3 if I did everything right.